food. The most important consideration after sex, eh, hey, Danny? Amber, oh. you just showed it out and I didn't hear what the man said. Um, I just took quite I took quite a turn it right now. Right. Oh, this is the French way of cooking. Now, the French use recipes, right? When they're, yeah, when they're a bit flush and... Yeah, Amber, um, stop talking into that machine. Right. Uh, I'll go into the other room, right? It's all cooking. Right. I'll tell you about how, about how to cook the concepts. Right? We'll look at them one day. We can't really take the, all the things trying to protect us from moths and flies. Um, alright. Concept cooking is, um, to cook with ideas. I remember this sort of thing, Moshi Moshi, uh, uh, Les, les Idées, uh, oh, I can't remember, <laughs> some French ad, but cooking with ideas. Ah, magic, uh, so it's, uh, it's a bit like magic, yes, it is a bit like magic, cooking with ideas, and, and uh, it works a lot like that, yeah. Um... When the, the French will cook with ideas usually on a, on a normal day, and when it's a family occasion or a special occasion, they will make up a special recipe because it costs more to go out and it's more hassle to go out and get specific ingredients and uh, to cook a special recipe. It's just more effort, it's more time, it's more money. So, concept cooking uh, it's just basically understanding what the French would call the mariage de goût. Marriage of of, te- of flavors, but you add to that certain ideas about how to cook and things like that, and that was what I was taught in France. I was taught by some friends that I helped out and worked for for a while, and they helped me teach me how to cook the French way. I never learnt the recipes, which I do regret a bit. I didn't stay long enough to learn the recipes. I can guess at most of them, but you know, I probably have to get a cookbook out. Uh, a lot of them are quite uh, quite a lot to the French recipes. Um. And that would have been more learning still, which I never did pick up on. But the concept of cooking really is is good enough for the British who are not majorly into food. Um, and they don't really have family meals and occasions these days. And special occasions tend to go out to a restaurant. So, as I said, uh, I mean, uh, uh, whilst cooking the uh, I, I, for experimentation, right, that's poor man's steak, what they call it in Britain, which is a different cut, which is similar to steak, and they use it in pasties and things. Um, and it will give a similar effect to steak if you cook it right. And a lot of people stew it because it can get tough, and you can't treat it at all the way you would treat a normal steak. And I've found that if you uh, put quite a lot of oil in, you can use olive oil, which is healthy if you want to, but uh, for certain flavours you perhaps use sunflower oil. I have a particularly healthy sunflower oil I get. Um... <laughs> it's a floral one, and floral products tend to be healthy. Um, yeah, so I found that if you cook it in quite a lot of oil, and then fry it later, and then it all tenderize and fry it later, you get more of a steak effect, you know. But it's actually quite nice, and just, well, not quite as nice, obviously, as the, the real old prime steak that we all love, you know. Um, but it's still pretty good, um, and, and quite a nice meal. I uh, said so if you sort of tenderise it in the oil and then, and I've got a little bit better, I used to tenderise it up high temperature, I think it's steak high temperature, right? No, that toughened it, so I'm trying a different technique now, which is to tenderise it in the oil gently, alright? And I'm going to use the oil to roast the vegetables. Uh, and once again, so it's just, it's not around set meals, it, it's set, set recipes and things like that, it's around sort of getting ingredients, like, you know, Bill goes to the and takes great pride in, in, in getting these really good ingredients uh, and he has to all chop around it, he has to shop it carefully around it or something so expensive, shops carefully, gets the good ingredients, good quality ingredients, so inexpensive um, and you could probably do this in most cheap shops but you have to shop quite carefully, you don't want anything that's bad quality, uh, you don't want anything that's got too many chemicals in it, it's bad unhealthy and you don't want to spend too much because in the cheap shops there are quite a few traps, actually particularly expensive things there to tempt people. Um, uh, he doesn't like much Tesco's and the big supermarkets like Sainsbury's and things like that. I do. I do tend to go in there if I can for a few luxuries. If I can afford it, I'll go into the big supermarkets like Tesco's for luxuries. Um, uh, it, there are a lot of luxuries. I think in terms of luxuries, they're more inexpensive in the big supermarkets than they are in the cheap ones. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, food, the importance of food. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's the great pleasure of life to the French. I mean, they would say food first, 
sex second. Don't know. That is because you're not always in the mood for sex, but you're very often in the mood for food. And I really think that's why it's a priority food. You know, obviously they think French is great enjoyment. You sit down with a good wine and everything else. Big deal made about it. Uh, every meal time. Uh, in the evening there's a little soup. And in the morning you've got the croissant. And the croissant's got to be perfect. And the baguette, you know. And the big cup of coffee. You know, everything is absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. If it, if it isn't, they get most upset. Uh, and this is more, far more important to the French than money. All they need is sufficient money for... Um, all right. Sufficient money for a good course of life, and then uh, they can concentrate and focus on their most important objective, which is every meal be perfection. And to the British, that's they wouldn't understand that at all, you know. But uh, as I said, they they have got that bit right. They have, and I think whatever culture you are, they are right about that, right? And therefore, whenever it is time to eat, and everyone's hungry, and everyone wants food, I think it's always best to make it nice. And I only have one rule, and that's nice and calm and harmonious around meal times. All right, everything is done to avoid an argument at meal time because if you have an argument at meal, you do not enjoy it at all, and you end up with terrible indigestion. And there was no point in buying the ingredients, cooking it, or anything. You know, you're gonna have an argument. Wait till afterwards. I have one before. You know, and see, once people are munching away and enjoying, they're not much in the mood really for arguments. You know, so as I said, food is the most important pleasure. And obviously, we all get hungry fairly fairly regularly. And uh, like Darren has his problem with tea, you know, even if you're slightly in the mood for sex, there's a difference between that and actually having it. <laughs> but a meal, you might as well sit down and enjoy your meal. And as I said, that Darren will go for his cup of tea. Um, uh, also drinks, yes, yes. We all enjoy. My mum does wonderful tea. Wonderful tea. I mean, it's always a little bit of a ceremony around my mum's tea. And it's absolutely beautiful, you know. And by then everyone's in a really good mood. My mum does that with tea. Oh, she's a wonderful cook as well. You know, she learned how to cook in France as well. Wonderful cook. And that's how she keeps my dad in such perfect health, you know, with her cooking. It's a very, very pure food. And delicious, you know. But very pure food. I, I'm a little more indulgent with my food. There's a few more things in there, but bad maybe. Uh, but, uh, as I said, that's, she keeps my dad in perfect health with this very, very pure food. And it's wonderful. You know, she's very, very good cook. Um, and I don't know how my mum manages this with MS. I don't. And everything else she's managed in her, in her life. Uh, I remember writing in my books, I can't think of anyone with more achievements than my mum. <laughs> Is there a page long enough to write them down? You know? And, you know, she's a little bit Rapunzel because... My dad is very much the provider, focused on money. And sometimes I, she crossly sort of bungs everything in the bin. She doesn't care for possessions, you know. Uh, and my dad can't help it, you know. He can't help being the provider. It's his nature. You know, with my dad, the main focus is money. You know, it's just the way he's made. And I sometimes think she would never say, she doesn't much care for money. And, you know... As I said, sometimes the possessions all get bungled in the bag and crossly bunged outside the door. It's like, I don't want them, you know.